first thing to talk about actually just because i've just only finished listening to it properly today the finished version is kanye finally dropped his much anticipated album donda right um you know the whole shebang behind it you know all the emotions and all the you know willy or won't he that went into the album and the ideas and the beefs and all that jack shit yeah you know you know the deal you know the deal but let's just talk about it musically for one moment right how good this is and this is coming from somebody that kind of tuned out from all things Kanye related when it comes to music just about let me say around St. Pablo era it's not St. Pablo era when you drop St. Pablo that's when I kind of just you know I kind of thought you know what maybe he's just lost it it just is what it is it's hard for an artist of his caliber especially considering the kind of music that he's done the influence that he's had the fact that he's so successful outside of music and he's incredibly rich as well it kind of takes away the onus and maybe the hunger to go back into a studio and be there until 5am working on the hook or working on a bridge right it's not just not the same at all it's not going to be the same which i completely understand but as a fan of him and knowing how musically talented he is and you know having listened to some of his best work it's just hard to listen to saint pablo and pretend it's anywhere near any of his best work it's just not it just is the case so i kind of i kind of stopped listening to it from there i, I peaked at you know yay when that came out of course and that was complete garbage i thought from front to back hardly anyone really replayed it if anything the best kind of album to come out of that Kanye period when he was you know um, running around being Trump's, uh, Trump's uh, cheerleader and talking about him being a dad to him was maybe the the kind of Sunday service tune that's the Sunday service album that was really good I thought as for a gospel album or for a live album it was epically done unfortunately you know there's a lot of stuff surrounding the album with people from the choir saying they haven't been paid and all that stuff but for just in terms of music in terms of arrangement in terms of emotion in terms of layers textures all that stuff that Sunday service album was really 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 good but i have to be honest this donda album might be the best album he's dropped since my beautiful dark twisted fantasy it really is up there i don't care what anyone says i think i've heard a clip recently of charmaine and god and a few other people from the breakfast club talking about how crap this is and it's too long i don't care i think people's attention span needs to be um worked on anyway i think people are too quick to say something is trash without actually giving it a good listen um an hour and 40 minutes isn't that much i think people spend about that maybe more you know browsing instagram and jumping from page to page and going on twitter and whatnot and if you can't sit there and passively listen to a music um an album in the background whilst you're on instagram or twitter there's something wrong with you especially how most pages you could just you know make sure the sound is off it's not difficult just listen to it all the way through from the beginning to the front don't get me wrong maybe some of the two songs towards the end could kind of get chopped off but i think overall as a entire project it's really really good like no one can deny the opening track i think especially if you listen to because i was one of the rare people or one of the small amounts niche people big fans who um went out of his way to record the stream and then kind of clip it into guy raj band and then export that into itunes and import that into my phone loads of loads of madness until i obviously found a good copy but i did that stuff and i think a lot of people did and to be honest for a lot for a performance that was um streamed live on apple um music and for something that kind of fed through i don't know whether it fed through one board or how they did it whatever they did in the background it did really sound it did it did sound pretty good when you just listened to the recording of the live performance it sounded like you got an idea of what the album was gonna sound like and feel like but now that it's been mixed and mastered this sounds epic like really really good obviously the one um omission that i'm a bit disappointed with is there's no chris brown in um what track is it i think he actually complained about it online too chris brown isn't featured in uh what's the song here i can't see it new again yeah new again that's a song right um he sounded really good on that so it's a shame that he's not featured on that who knows if that's a jay-z thing we don't really know but um he's not on there but apart from that the features are incredible like really really good five year foreign of course maybe have the best verse i think overall on um off grid um definitely i think uh playboy car his voice is just just you know he didn't really step up i don't think in that regard but you know maybe that's not really his forte and he seems to be a little bit tight when it comes to features he just gives people a 16 and bounces but for off the grid was amazing it's a great entry track it's a it's interesting because off the grid or five year foreign in general he's not a he's not like a new artist right he's been around for a while but it's strange in, a, in an artist's career sometimes all it takes is one feature all it takes is one track one appearance for your career to suddenly pop again and this might be his reintroduction once again for him to kind of gather some steam and blow up and maybe um, become the star that a lot of people kind of want him to be but he hasn't necessarily been that guy at the moment obviously maybe some legal stuff was happening but i think this might be a chance for him to kind of elevate his career onwards because that verse was just 
just epic like hopefully they, they released a uncensored version because you know it sounds a little bit you know a little bit you know weird but apart from that amazing obviously hurricane fit and reaching little baby on the weekend is just heavenly the weekend on that hook and that chorus like wow 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 um baby keem obviously rips it on praise to god little dirk and vora is all right um i thought little yeah he did really well on okay okay he's got that kind of minnesota beat flow that he's kind of rapping with at the moment um young fog of remote control it might be one of my favorite tracks on there especially to play out i think that'll be a definitely a good one that'll get the rave going um what else did i really really like oh no let's go back to the verses so uh five year foreign for sure had one of the best verses on there and then the second one is definitely a controversial choice because of all the cancellation stuff around him was definitely the baby i thought the baby's verse on um, jail 2 was incredible um definitely a great way to kind of reintroduce yourself um into the public consciousness after you know all the cancellation stuff that happened with his comments uh, um what was it was it a rolling loud or whatever right when he made those um egregious comments that he's still kind of suffering from but I thought that was a really, really, really great verse, especially for somebody who's, especially for an artist who people are accused for being a little bit one dimensional and not having a lot of flows. Um, I thought he was really good on that one. Um, I also thought the addition of Marilyn Manson, you know, again, just as a layer on top on that chorus was incredible. Like who's going to jail to that screaming in the background? You're like, oof, that sounds phenomenal. Um, let's not let's not play around. But the Marilyn Manson feature is interesting because I understand, you know. Kanye's got this thing where he doesn't like cancellation, right? He doesn't like people getting cancelled. He kind of always rooting for the underdog. And for somebody of his stature, somebody of his, you know, fame and celebrity and success and wealth, it's pretty incredible that he can reach back down and say, nah, you're not going to cancel this person, right? Especially if that person shows him love, right? Because he said about, you know, the baby was one of the only people that vocally said he would vote for Kanye if he did run for president, right? When he was, everyone was kind of laughing at him. So cool. He's loyal in that sense. If you back him, he'll back you. But the Marilyn Manson one's an odd one because it's not like a misspeak. It's not like a misspoken thing, like what the baby did, right? Where he, maybe he wasn't as culturally aware or sensitive of what's going on and how times have changed. This is straight up. This guy's been accused of raping it. Like he's been accused of assault by various women in his life. Now, some people would argue, hey, if you're getting with Marilyn Manson, then you have to accept that he's a bit of a freak. You just have to look at the dude. You just have to kind of listen to his music, you know, look at the stuff that he's done in the past and a whole career of just outrage and and you know pushing the buttons and living a pure hedonistic artistic life is definitely going to bring um some bad things with it especially for the people that are nearest and dearest to you unfortunately those are the ones that always have to suffer so you could look at it and say hey these women should have known better by getting a relationship with Randall manson it was never going to be you know getting married to some john smith guy and having a white picket fence and a couple of kids and a dog but Still, some of the allegations, some of the essays, I forgot who the lady was. I think she was from Westworld, right? The main actress. She read that massive kind of caption talking about everything, like pressing charges. I was like, oof, I don't know, man. Plus, he started to look a bit, he started to look a bit crazy. He's looking really bloated. He's got that sort of drunk alcoholic, um, you know, um, weekly cokehead kind of bloat about him, right? He just looks a little bit inflamed, which usually speaks to somebody, you know, sat at home with the blinds closed, not really trying to go outside and court attention. So for Kanye to step up and have him right front and center with him outside of his mother's home right that he recreated that stadium was pretty wild um but again that's why you love the guy in it because he's willing to take those chances he's willing to put together essentially a 27 track gospel album with some of the biggest stars around in hip-hop at the moment get them to not curse for the most part and also you know feature two of the most cancelled people in society at the moment right one in hip-hop and one in kind of pop culture and you know the baby and uh what's his name and marilyn manson and unfortunately it just sounds really good so that's the problem people have now unfortunately it sounds amazing so that's where you have to kind of get to the point where you decide can i separate the art from the artist and that's definitely one of those tracks you have to kind of figure out because there's no denying that that jail 2 is just phenomenal it's much better than jail 1 let's not kill let's not say anything more anything less than that that is just a fact and it is what it is um another great feature that i think doesn't really get a lot of um probably won't get a lot of shine is um the 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 what you call it the new girl they featured on there the what's his what's her name shensia shensia smashes it she's on two tracks okay okay part two and double check this one there's a really good one that she comes on not okay okay part two is further than that one which one was that one 
not Sunday. Riley Rich is obviously really good. He he he. Riley Rich marries really well with Kanye. Hopefully they drew some sort of mixtape or a couple more tracks together. I think their tones and their voices go really well. I thought that was a really good collaboration. So Shansia is on. Oh yeah, that's it. Pure Souls. That's the one we Riley Rich. She's on Pure Souls and Okay Okay Part Two. She's a really great addition to it, especially Pure Souls. God damn it, her voice comes in behind heavenly as hell. Um, she sounds really great. It's really amazing. I don't know, I'm not sure who added her last minute.com onto the album or kind of, you know, got um basically kind of got her attention. I'm not really sure whether her coming out in that jerk chicken barbecue thing was a thing that kind of sparked its interest. But regardless, man, that was a collaboration I didn't see coming that sounded amazing. If anything, it sounded similar. She sounded similar in tone to somebody like a 070 shake. So maybe that was what that track was. It might have been a reference that they probably have maybe replaced Shake with and Sia. I'm not sure. But regardless, she does hold her own. And again, it's for someone like her as a fairly new artist to get that kind of a look and a shine. Hopefully that will be the push that she needs to kind of blow up because she's super talented. Really great freestyles. I think she's got one with Flex. That's really, really good. I really recommend you check that out. And she had one of the best performances I thought at um, a pretty mediocre festival in, um, what was it? Was it the Rolling Loud or was it something else? It was raining. She did a really good performance almost like stage show all in it it's like super dance hall um culture wise in terms of loads of dancers and routines and stuff going on it was really fun so that was excellent to see but of course not everyone is a fan of the album so this is an article or review here from the guardian which basically says don the kanye west review misfire lyricism from a diminished figure two out of five and i'm curious again off the back of the the breakfast club review and how they've been reviewing it and basically saying he is a clown and a circus show basically attributing more to the whole you know uh controversy that happened around the baby's feature who 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 didn't approve it who did approve it so you know the breakfast club guys were kind of setting the tone in that regard but i just want just to see what people think who weren't fans of the actual album itself because I, I just can't get it i can't get how anybody can listen to this and not like it because sonically musically the way it's mixed especially if you listen to the live versions of the album when you listen to it finally the final project of a final pro, pro, you know, product that we have now available on the streaming platforms it sounds incredible it sounds expensive um it sounds like somebody you know because uh, who knows how much he spent on this album because that's the thing you have to remember too free live listening parties in these massive stadiums all the, uh, for, for, don't get me wrong he sold a lot of merch but still the amount of people featured the amount of engineers that have to kind of you know make the album work <laughs> He could easily be in a red for this album, easily. And he still, you know, went out of his way to artistically put it together in that way. Um, it, it just kind of bleeds through in the final product. So it's impossible to kind of view that or listen to it and not like it for the majority of it. And I don't get me wrong, the, the, the length might be a bit too much for you because I think people nowadays just don't really want anything above 10 tracks or maybe max 14, 12. But still, sometimes when it comes to the bigger, the bigger artists, right, the ones at the top tier, the more the merrier because you're not going to hear from them for too long. I mean, he's not, it's not like he's going to drop a track or an album every other year or every year. He's definitely going to do something every two years or maybe even longer. So the fact that he's able to give us 26 plus tracks or whatever it is, no, 27 plus tracks is definitely um, something that I am a fan of. But anyway, The Guardian aren't fans of it. They said here, Kanye West done a review, misfiring lyricism from diminished figure. A diminished figure. I wonder why they say this. So it said, the yeah, chaotic preview events for the Kanye's 10th studio album, Donda, have dominated social media feeds in recent weeks. Each one promising a release date and never materialized. The coverage of the events has focused on Kim Kardashian dressed as a Balenciaga clad sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> okay, these guys are not fans of them at all, isn't it? 50, $50 chicken tenders, potential Drake disses, levitations and cameos from alleged rapist Marilyn Munson and homophobic make the baby ouch they're coming firing fans called west a genius capable of creating excitement theater and evolves uh, in real time others saw him as an empty provocateur provocateur um much like a kindred spirit donald trump west seems to um instinctively know how to weaponize controversy to drive interest in a new project cool that is fairly true but unfortunately nowadays weaponizing controversy is the only way to garner any kind of attention um you look at people that i featured previously here like lizzo um, you look at people that I previously featured here, like do not do really is not a good example, but yeah, that's two examples. With Lizzo, it's either you f you manufacture controversy by consistently keeping yourself in the headlines. With Dua Lipa, you either pay a record label to com co to continually 
place your ads in certain places you know i'd love for somebody to count how many times pop crave posts about dua lipa in a week or let, let her in a month right there's definitely a concerted effort to make sure she's always in front and center inside in your face and consistently presented to you on every part of social media to the point where you can't ignore her music and you can't avoid her, her face in any way shape or form so that is just the nature of the beast unfortunately the, the, the days of art is just slaving in the studio and quietly releasing an album with no fanfare or marketing it just doesn't exist because there's just too much money to be made and too much money on the line for you to risk a potentially putting out an album that no one's going to listen to why not try to drive controversy especially if you know the work is good so that people can listen to it um, i'm not a fan of people just drive you know drumming up controversy like you know the little nas x for instance a good example and the music is fairly mediocre like you know i mean like his his career is essentially devolved into nothingness after uh, old town road which is a pretty interesting and you know uh exciting track would have kind of spurned and maybe a new trend in terms of hip-hop you know country mix whatever and now he's basically devolved into what being a crap caricature of lady gaga for instance so controversy just is what it is i don't think people should get their tits all in a bother for that it continues said with the eventual release of Donda, named after West's English professor mother who died in 2007, there is a nagging sense that the spectacle has overshadowed the actual music, with the bloated 108 minute album rarely sure of what it's trying to say. Yes, it is. It's just a celebration of God. I don't know what it's trying to say. Of course it is. It's talking about his struggle, it's talking about his pain. If anything, this album is a better, it's a better representation of Kanye West's Christian journey if that makes any sort of sense i think in the beginning it did feel a little, a little bit like a gimmick it did feel like he was trying to you know publicly redeem himself after all these different things that he's gone through but you know in pure good music done the fashion or that whole crew even virgil's the same way one of the great things about them is that they love to learn out loud they love to learn in public right they love to learn in the middle of the flipping town square they're not away in their studio you know toiling on their craft they'll do that too but they want to learn out, out loud in real time and because of that you see some guy that's not a fully formed you know religious dude at the moment going out in front of camera and talking about things that he probably shouldn't be talking about or he's not that well versed in and stumbling over his words misspeaking here and there you know making himself look like a fool blah blah blah, blah, blah. and it eventually gets to this point where you feel like minus all the you know veiled threats of drake <laughs> it feels like this is a proper gospel album it feels like it feels like a proper modern interpretation this feels like what you should hear if you go to like a spack nation if you're to go to like a hill song if you're to go to like what is that what that church is it hill song as well that church that justin bieber's pastor goes to the one that always has top off all those that's what it feels like it should sound like and this is it fully formed which is why you know if you're a gospel rap artist unfortunately this is the level that you've got to match because usually gospel hip-hop is a bit crap right the only good old gospel hip-hop that i listened to back in the day was like g-force right this little um free um free person rap crew that were used to that spawned out of kscc that i used to go to back in the day and they were amazing right one of the only sort of like gospel acts that i saw growing up that was equally as good as the stuff i was listening to on radio and whatnot or whatever listen to at home really 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 good but it's difficult at this moment to kind of you know compete with middle of the road acts in hip hop because gospel music is just a little bit limiting but I think Kanye has done the best representation of it so far so I think it's pretty clear what he's trying to say it's a guy it's an older dude trying to basically you know wrestle with his faith and with his fame and with his wealth and with his network and with his voice blah blah blah, blah. it's fairly easy but again I, don't, I just don't think these people like him so it continues it says the intro done the chant a sequence of eerie rec rec recitations of his mother's name seemingly designed to send you into a sunken place as arresting giving you an impression that you're about to undergo an immersive religious experience but too often the songs that follow are built on half-baked ideas from west more concerned with self-pity and martyrdom than confront then confronting his contradictions i don't know what they're talking about here I'm sure he's aware of his contradiction. Like I said, those veil threats to Drake and then putting out a gospel album is a fairly strong contradiction. I don't think he would kind of deny that, right? The fact that he's posting up guys' address and talking about what's spinning the block, but then he's also talking about his love for Christ. It's just funny. Um, it just is what it is. We're all we're all flawed, hypocritical human beings. It continues, said over the slightly flat dad rock riffs of jail. Um, oh, that's that's mean. Flat dad rock chiff. Come on, man. Wes is reunited with his watch the throne partner Jay Z, who boasts that he convinced his long time foe to give up the red maga cap, but the song's melody me meanders and Wes's lyrics um, feel blunted. In the past, he had a sharp punchline. Face it, Jerome got more time than Brandon. He rapped in 2010, um, definitely highlighting racial equality in the US justice system. Here, he lethargically repeats the question and guess who's going to jail? Um, 
it without ever really landing on what he's implying. He could easily be read as a moan about cancel culture, which it is. He does the same thing on God Breathed, a trap and firm prosperity, that marries Christianity is transcendence with a rush of rave. West repeats how no God breathed on this, like he's running through a potential three hundred and fifty T shirt slogan with marketing manager. Like a lot of West Post Life of Pablo work, these songs feel stitched together and rushed. I don't know how sure anyone can listen to Don though feel like it's rushed. If anything, it feels expensive and it feels really well done. Like especially if you hear the streams from the first stream to the final products like so what we've had three four versions of this album the three live the three live versions and the one that we have all on our phones and they all sound drastically different some of the tracks maybe sound better on some of the live streams depending on who you speak to but for the most part it sounds really really well done um you can definitely understand why he was on the phone screaming to flipping uh, Mike Dean or whatnot. It continues as hearing this billionaire there, wallow in self pity. Everything that you do, God, so so everything that you do, good. It just gets unnoticed. West complains on Jesus Lord and claim he's anti commercial on keep my spirit alive. Reveals his lack of self awareness and means his big emotional moments such as pondering whether death will finally reunite with his mother or buckling under the surge, the strain of divorce, cussing out your baby mother. Guess what? That's why we call it custody. Um, don't fully connect. Wes is lacking in the things that once made him so compelling as a songwriter. Self-deprecation. Out of the jerk, she said, and you are and you are what you eat. Went a right line in 2010 for Devil's a New Dress. And a sense of humor to cut through the moments of tension. The atmosphere here is solemn. Aside from the odd dad joke here and there, some say Adam could never be black because a black man never shared his rib. Self deprecation, interesting point. It's a fairly decent point to make. Maybe it's because I would say most of the reason why that is probably gone is because of his content or because of his religion, right? He's become a born again Christian. So maybe some most of that self deprecation kind of goes away because you can sometimes become more self actualized when you give your life to some sort of faith or whenever you give your life to Christ, when you give your life to religion. Yeah, when you commit to some sort of religious practice, you definitely become less um, self effacing. You probably will come more of a short of yourself and you leave the self-deprecation to maybe your prayers, I would assume. Um, it's less of a boasting sort of thing, right? And sometimes it feels like self-deprecation in some points is a way for you people or humans in general to connect with others because you don't want to kind of, you know, you don't want to separate yourself too much. You want people to know that you, you're going through exactly the same things that they're going through, the self that and whatnot. But when you're a, you know, mega superstar like these sort of people, you kind of for better for lack of a better term for better for worse you kind of believe your own shit you kind of believe you are who you say you are if god if you know if if god if kindly thinks he's god he definitely thinks it he's not just saying it for the sake of it um so it's hard to kind of it's hard to kind of wrap your head around somebody who thinks so highly of themselves also deciding that they're going to be self-deprecating on an album like this especially if their 10th album at the age he's at with the success he's got it's just an impossible thing to re kind of request from somebody it continues said a one and undeniably excellent moment in believe is believe what i say which utilizes lauren hill's healing coups of a classic do-up um for a more up-tempo soul song which west reminds himself not to be dragged down by the fame it's the record's most restorative moment Moment, just like Ghost Town was a midi otherwise uneven yay. Meanwhile, Hurricane, which features the baby in the weekend, contains a massive hook from the latter that projects walk on water confidence. There is a lot of okay, thank god. I thought they were gonna say they didn't like the hurricane. If they said they didn't like hurricane, I'd say these guys are insane. There are a lot of di there's a lot to digest when your life is always moving with spits, reflecting on the progressing from school dropout to guest speaker at Yale. On this track, he he feels more like a human being and less like somebody delivering the doctrine of a corporate supercharge. Similarly, Lord, I need you has an intimate details of his collapsing marriage and is an affecting moment of frailty even if the memory of we used to do the freak seven days a week has him sounding like jim's dad in american pie <laughs> this old man rock stuff as well he is an old man though right isn't he like in his 40s kanye fast approaching his 50s in an industry where so in the industry in a scene where he's what he's competing with drake who is effectively 10 years his junior who is making songs for people 10 years younger than him He's he's kind of fighting a losing fight for the most part, right? It's impossible to try and compete with that guy, which is why I think this album is the best 
way to battle him because effectively you're just doing what you're doing you're not trying to make the stuff that drake does because he can never make the stuff that drake does his stuff is never going to bang in the clubs the way that drake is going to bang in the club it just is what it is for, for sure when sir fried lover boy comes out there's going to be at least five tracks on there that are going to go off in the clubs right go off in the festivals go off in the live shows and Kanye is just never going to be that guy because it's a moment it's a phase he's not locked in with the kids like that he's not about like that you know what I mean he's just you know he is where he is so this old man jibes was weird because he is an old man I think this album is a celebration of being old and having a complex life and dealing with family and marriage and being a father and whatever it's just that's what it sounds like to me I don't think that's a good criticism I think it is what it is it's continuous as a harsh fact is that the best verses on Donda don't come from Kanye. Brooklyn drill rapper Five Year Foreign lights up the stirring. Yes, go of course, finally, this is something I agree with. Off the grid with lyrical grenades about his face tattoos being a marker of truth. Baby Cream mixes worship with dark um carnality on the mosh pit. Um, with his auto-tune driven verse on Praise God. Definitely he's a strong word, Jerry Electronica, Nitz Aztecs and Ottomans with the Nation of Islam and Wakanda, if you love know, monk and modern imperialism into the cryptic worldview of Jesus Lord while surrealist thug West Side Gun floats over Keep My Spirit Alive. But that's bait though, isn't it? You already knew white people. I don't know if this guy personally is white or not, but you already know someone like a guy who's always going to like flipping Jerry Electronica and West Side Gun, right? It's just the archetypal sort of artist that those guys will kind of be into. You know, those kind of tofty hipsters that pretend they like hip hop and the only people they listen to are Kendrick, Jerry Electronica, and maybe a little bit of Griselda. Like, it's just typical. It continues. Chicago Jules Bluesman, Lil Dirk talks about the the recent murder of his brother on Jonah and powerfully references a niece and nephew now without a father West clearly inspires frank admission from all the artists on Dunder who treat him like a priest they visited and group therapy that's very true that's a very fair description because that's one part you did especially when you listen to the stream live for the first time it was impressive to see all these people that you hear you know in general on billboard charts and mixes and just you know they're on your current playlist or hip-hop tracks to hear those same people you know rap or spit or sing without cursing it was incredible because it was like you could feel the restraint you could feel them trying to like you know struggling to use words that didn't end with bitch or whatever it may be right they had to kind of find other words to fit into their raps and for the most part it did bring out the best in everybody i thought especially five year for a good big example like he sounds incredible that verse is ugh. That should definitely get a wheel up in the club and it ends it says disappointing that wes is unable to match the clarity of thought he coast by with ghost ball fragments that don't really go anywhere something particularly evident on come to life with a piano line that pulls the heartstrings in a manner of a cancer charity tv commercial it's hard to tell a billionaire what to do and a lack of self-edit means donda often sags huh a record that is attributed to the powerful black woman who lacks much itself from female perspective beyond old audio clips of speeches by Donda West and an eventful strong um, ghost guest spot by Shinisa, um, Sh Sh Shinisia, whatever have you pronounce it on OK OK Part 2. On his 2004 studio debut, the college dropout West at times, an anti-consumerist -cons um, who joked about our exception of material goods and brand affinity. Years later, he's come full circle, a venture capitalist who had to talk to God through old ceilings, gold ceilings, sorry. On the most albums, uh, the at the heart of Dundas crowdsourced music is a diminished figure, one at odds with the witty rule break of the past. I don't understand what these guys... Wait, do you think... I, don't know, I think it's... Um, do you think Sid Vicious can be Sid Vicious forever? I don't think what I don't know what they want. Like it's like um, I don't know. Sivish is a good example. Like how long can you be that guy when you when you're in your fifties with two kids, and you've got a dad bod? It's just impossible to be that agent provocateur pushing buttons. And plus, it gets a little bit it gets a little bit corny. People get tired of that gimmick when you're past a certain age or when you moved on to a certain stage in your life. It just isn't the same. So I'd much rather see my artists grow into these complex, interesting human beings that we all have to kind of wrestle with because we have these real idealistic memories of what they used to be as opposed to just kind of you know a repetition of their greatest hits so who wants that who wants to have a 44 version of you know college dropout you don't want that it's just it would just be a bit sad i want to hear him you know experiment i want to hear him kind of go into different fields and if anything kind of becoming a christian now has probably limited the amount of stuff you can talk about but it's also kind of really lasered in how he approaches music and it's probably why this is probably the best version of what we've been able to listen to so far because life life of saint pablo or life of pablo and then yay were ones that you felt like were 
in the middle not really sure where he was going he was going through a lot of stuff anyway personally and now this is the fully actualized version of him he's in his studio doing push-ups he's wearing incredible clothes he's got his family around him friends and stuff the first time i've seen don c hanging around him in public for a long time he's there and all these people like for sure this is the reason why it's come it's been some of the best stuff you've heard he's like a multi-billionaire um he's, he's doing better than ever he's designing flipping musical instruments right he's doing the great stuff so i'm surprised that my opinion this is probably the best recognition rest, best rendition of this version of christian yeah that we've definitely seen but you know i don't agree with thomas hobbs from the guardian but it's good to hear other people's opinions on stuff you like because it, i think it sharpens and hones in your view on the stuff that you like as well because there's too much talk about things you hate and all of things you love but sometimes it's good to kind of contrast the two things so definitely check that out matt if you haven't already it's obviously out this weekend and i'm sure most people have listened to it 